ever wish your submarine was more convenient. Now you can make your doors open automatically while still keeping water out. Keep watching to find out how on this old sub. Do you want to start an exciting career as a submariner? Join Captain Trans crew today and be a part of the growing team of the JS Good Intentions. To enlist, enter your name in response to this episode. We look forward to working with you. To begin with, you should know that your sub likely has components already installed in the ceiling. However, we will just be using a brand new set of components. Not only will this prevent us from interfering with anything that has already been built, but this will make it clear for you to understand what it is we are doing. We will need our components that are carefully alphabetized in our cabinet. So we'll need AND components, NOT components, and signal check components. We will also of course need wires. Additionally, a water detector could help if the room does not currently feature one, such as the one we're about to work on. You really only need one AND, one NOT, and one signal check, but I'm going to be showing you different couple installations, so we'll be using more than one. You should know that while you can easily just set the motion sensor to automatically start triggering by just taking your wire, setting it up to the door, that will still open up the door even if you aren't ready for it if there's water nearby. So maybe we're just climbing this ladder, the door swings open, and suddenly water. Or perhaps this area over here, we're climbing down the ladder to get something. This door swings open and water. We need to take extra steps to prevent that. We're going to go ahead and install a knot up here. And. And a signal check. Oops. Oh, that's fine. We'll be moving these around a little bit because I plan on revising the lights of this old sub. Let's go ahead and install a water detector. Place it right here. Where you place it. Doesn't matter too much as long as it can detect water, as long as it can get underwater. If you put it up at the top, then you're just asking for the room to be full before it detects anything. But still, that may be the only thing you care about. Well, notice that when the water detector detects water, it will send out a signal of 1. When it doesn't detect any water, it'll send out a signal of 0. Let's go ahead and, for the purposes of today's demonstration, all wires that I pin in will only be starting from the output. Even if there's an input side and it would make more sense for me to go straight there, for today's lesson, we'll just be staying with this as our beginning point. This is the signal output. Everything on the right side of every circuit station is output. Everything on the left side is input. With that in mind, that helps clear up a lot of confusion. I'm going to go and just feed this through the door. And we're going to put this into not signal in. This was a signal out. And this is a signal in at this point, meaning that this water detector is now feeding energy or, or information into this not component. When the not component does not receive a signal, it will send a signal out. Let's go ahead and put one for a signal out. And then what we need to do is we need to set this into the AND section. What an AND allows us to do is when we get two different inputs, that's the only time it will send a signal out. We're going to go and just put signal in two. It can be one, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to go and put signal in two. What does matter for some cases of your submarine, you might want a time frame of at least 0.02. While in this particular sub, this door here does function just fine with 0.00 time frame. Later on, when you're trying to combine two different water detectors to send a signal at the same time, Having a bit of time frame here will help you synchronize. You might encounter other doors on your submarine, bashing your head against the wall and the door literally, trying to figure out why your automatic doors are not working. Increasing the time frame can help with this. Okay, one of the things that has to happen is this AND must have both events become true in order to send out a signal. We also need to set up the motion detector and feed that into the AND. What we're looking at is Condition number one, if the motion detector detects movement, this is true. Condition number two, if the water detector doesn't detect anything, this is true. Once these are all true, that's when we can safely engineer this into the door. 
And we'll go ahead and take out the motion detector one, the one that we started with. That wasn't part of our insulation. It was just part of explaining how the door works. Why? Because that motion detector is already geared into the AND. Let's take a look at this. Will this function? As they walk, it opens on its own. This signal check is for setting up a light so that you can easily see what's going on. We will go ahead and put on a suit because safety first. Now we've already seen that the door will open without us needing to press a button. If there's water, will it open? It does not. This also includes from the other side. So if I decide that we need to stay put here and someone walks near the door, they will not be assailed immediately by water. However, we can make things a little bit easier for us to manage. Let's seal this back up for the time being. We're going to go ahead and wire into this. Signal out. And normally we'd feed it through the door, but for today's demonstration purposes, we will just be feeding it outside the door since we already have this area full of water. And line it up, send it into the signal check component. Then we're going to take the signal check component, do signal out. Doesn't seem like I can successfully get through there, so we'll use this light here to make it similar. The light on the other side is exactly the same, so this is functional. So we'll do set color. You notice that the light has changed, but it changed to a color that we didn't, it wasn't really helpful to us. That's because we didn't properly configure this output or false output. But what we're going to do, if we detect water, we're going to have 0, 0, 206, 228. A nice shade of blue that makes it obvious that something's going on. Before we can continue, we will need a target signal. When the water detector detects water, it sends a 1. So we're going to put a 1 here. You notice that the light has turned blue. You can see here that the output is 1. If we change this to something else, such as water or 99, we'll need to make sure that the signal check looks for that specific target signal. As for a false output, this will be the color that the light turns into when there is no water. So we're going to go ahead and put the status of the RGB that was in there before we tampered with it. So it's going to be 135, 245, 255, and 125. These numbers are all up to you. It's all up to whatever you want versus red green, blue, and then alpha, alpha being how opaque or solid this light is. Okay, let's go ahead and drain out the water. And you notice that that light has now turned white again. Right now, it doesn't help too much because it's on this side, but that was for demonstration purposes while we had the room sealed up. Let's go ahead and engineer it to this lamp now. And we'll fill up the room again. Okay, this light has turned blue, as well as the light on the other side. Now that is for one water detector. Unfortunately, when you're working with multiple water detectors, such as a door that doesn't lead into a dead end, you might need another AND chip. Let's take a look at the existing one that we have here. One already leads into the motion sensor, and one leads into the knot. Let's use our med bay as an example. So let's go ahead and get Jill out of the way. Place in. Knot. And. And signal check. But that's just for this side. We're also going to need, on this side, not, and we'll need another and. I'm going to place it to the right this time, and you'll see why in a minute. That being said, you can place these anywhere you want, and place it in the order that makes the most sense to you. Take some more wire, and let's get going. For the purposes of this wire, we will not be feeding it neatly through anything. I'm just going to be cutting it right through the room, so I apologize, doctor. You'll have to not mind me. So we're going to signal out. We're going to send this back into the not signal in just like we did before same thing over here underneath this crate take this signal out feed it into this knot both water detectors are feeding into the knots here's where the steps get a little bit different 
Because we don't have enough pins for this and, which will feed into the door, we actually need to feed this into this right here. And this knot to the same and component. So what's going on here is we're feeding both knots into this. This condenses our operation. And we're gonna go and take this signal out and send it into this and. Those are the new steps. Then we go back to the previous steps we had before. Motion detector, the and, and of course, the signal out. So it's the two. Gear it into the door. By doing this, we should be able to safely make sure that the door will not open automatically when there is water in the area. Let's test this out. I'm gonna go ahead and flood both rooms or at least put a little bit of water in them and that should prevent any, that should prevent the door from opening up automatically, but you can always open it manually like you normally do. Let's go ahead and engineer this. Disable the set target level so that we can manually control this pump. And we'll fill up the room. Some water in this room and turn it off. You can see here that the door has not opened automatically. And on the other side of the door, it's all airtight as well. Let's have Dr. Hyde here where it's a little safer. Let's try draining this room and flipping the flipping things to the other side. See the door has automatically opened and we're going to try this room. We're going to assert manual control. Pump in the water. This time we'll get a little fuller because we're going to, as the final test, we're going to make sure that if both rooms have water, will the doors still open automatically? All right, that should be plenty of water. Okay, this room is completely submerged. As I approach the door, it does not open automatically. Let's go ahead and open this door real quick. Flood both rooms. Need the vicinity so that it closes, and as we approach, the door does not open. So as long as it detects any water whatsoever, it will not be opening. And of course, we can use a signal check to set up a light switch here. We're gonna go throughout the entire sub and do this for most of our doors. Perhaps not the ballast hatches, maybe not the armory. So we will be engineering a separate switch for this so that if our crew members did need to access the door, maybe they could get in without the captain or the security officer's key card. And that concludes this episode. The original schematic of this idea, credit goes to the gaming nerd. Link in the description below. I have made some alterations and perhaps they are not for the better. But if you have a different way to set the doors that you'd like to share, let us know. Next time, we create a timer to keep on gardening. Till then, I'm Captain Tran for This Old Sub.